These are the top three tips that would explode your remote solar sales in 2024. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ivan and we're talking about how to explode your solar sales. A lot of people nowadays try to leave the face to face environment and sell over the phone from the comfort of their own home. The biggest mistakes that a lot of people make is that they try to treat it the same way as they talk to people when they're in their living room. And the fact of the matter that although it's the same type of sale because you're selling the same product, it is so much different when you do it from a distance. And not only Zoom, because if you know anything about me, I don't like Zoom calls. I actually love Zoom calls, but when it comes to selling solar remotely, Zoom calls creates a big friction and people, believe it or not, have an extremely difficult time joining a simple Zoom call. So we've ruled it out a long time ago and all we focus on is over the phone selling. Now, if you wanna win and if you wanna absolutely annihilate everybody and if you wanna have the best year yet, doing what you love, helping people save money, while not being away from your family, then the first thing you got to do is you need to build trust. And the way to build trust is, first of all, you have to realize that they can't see you and you can't see them. You're not able to read their facial expressions and they're not able to see your nonverbal communication. And so you're just going to have to come to terms with the fact that you just need to spend a little bit more time with them on the phone at the very, very beginning of that phone call. And the next thing you should also keep in mind is that it's not going to be a one call close. I don't care who tells you that stuff. If they tell you you can close people in one call, yes, that can happen, but that's not the standard. Over the phone selling requires a multiple touch with people. You got to touch base with them more than a couple of times. Most of the time, your sales are going to happen from three to five touches. It's not going to be a simple one call shutdown. I'm not saying each and every single one of these calls needs to be half an hour to an hour, but it will take you about three to five touch points in order to close people on average. And you just have to come to terms with that. It doesn't mean your performance is bad. It just means that that's how things are and you need to accept it as a fact. Now, the best way to build trust with somebody on the phone is, like I said, to spend a little bit more time with them and not behave like the typical salesperson. A typical salesperson will want to get straight to the point and kind of like not waste any time and get into the sale without really breaking the ice and getting their guard down and, and so on and so forth. What you want to do is you want to spend that time to really find out about who they are. If you tell them at the very beginning of that call, how are you doing today? And they respond to you, hey, I'm doing something in a garage or I'm working in my backyard or whatever. Don't just say, all right, well, thanks for taking the time. What I want to do is I want to go over to, it's like, dude, ask them, what are they working on? Where are they based out of? Is it hot? Is it rainy? And at that point, you can actually pick up a lot of clues about the individual as well. If they're short and snappy, and they really don't like to talk and they respond in one sentence in a few words, then you know not to spend a lot of time with them and you can just move on. But if they tell you, hey, you know, I've been doing this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, can't wait for the weekend or whatever, okay? You already can see that that person likes to talk. So spend three to five minutes at the very beginning of that call building trust because that three to five minutes is one of the most important sections of the entire conversation that you should never really neglect. Show people that you're not a robot. Show people that you're a human. Feel free to share a personal story or an experience with them while in the trust building stage. And that will get you a lot closer to building trust with the homeowner, which would then mean that at that point, they can actually trust you with anything. So. When I really say build trust with people, I really mean like you have to become their best friend. They have to feel super comfortable with you because over the phone, if you talk to a stranger, the things that you take them through during the solar pitch could make somebody who doesn't know you very uncomfortable. So they literally have to feel like they're talking to their best friend and you can achieve that with a little 
chit chat at the very beginning, share a personal experience, show them that you're human and get right to it. Now, the second thing, once you build trust is you have to become their financial advisor. So now they trust you. Now you need to make them feel that they can trust you with their money because that's what exactly what solar is. Although you're helping them save money, the reality of the matter is, is that they're either getting into a loan or a lease and it's a long term commitment. So you need to do what a financial advisor would do, what any financial advisor would do. A financial advisor is not going to sit down with you and talk to you about tomorrow or uh, in a week from now or in a month from now. They're going to future pace to 5, 10, 15 years from now. They're going to really, you know, sit you down and talk to you about your future, which is exactly what you need to do in every conversation with a homeowner. And the bottom line is they need to trust you and they need to feel like they can trust you with their money and you are their financial advisor. Now they can trust you. They can trust you with their money. They understand it's a loan or a lease and it's long term and that's okay. Of And now you can really get to the numbers. But before that, you cannot really talk about any numbers because they do not trust. You. So even if they're polite enough to stay on the phone with you, if they don't feel like they trust you, as soon as they get off that call, I guarantee you, most often than not, they're either going to ignore you, not really answer your calls, texts, voicemails, or what have you, and you're going to find it very, very difficult to get a hold of them. And that's because they don't feel like you're their best friend, and they don't feel like they can trust you with their money. So that is all. Now, the third thing they want to do, and this is huge. I mean, if you get that right, I guarantee you, you're going to skyrocket your sales. Okay. The third thing is they have to know. Now, remember, this is over the phone. If you're used to selling face to face, I'm training a group of people right now and they all have experience, but I'm telling you, if you're used to that type of environment over the phone, selling is nowhere near the same. It's a different strategy if you want to win. So what they want to know, the third thing I would say is they want to know how you're not going to fuck them over. It's simple, super simple. They want to know that you're not going to screw them over. It is as simple and profound as that. Many of you are in the solar industry because solar is amazing, but only you and I know that the homeowner doesn't know that the reality and the fact of the matter is that a lot of people are actually scared of solar because of the horror stories that they've heard. Everybody has someone in their immediate family or network that's been screwed over by a sleazy salesman that pitched them the wrong numbers, didn't really offset 100% of their bill, so they ended up getting two bills instead of one, so no savings at the end. Everybody knows someone like that. The horror stories are all over the place, all over the internet. And so that's exactly what you need to do. That's point number three. And if you hear me out on this, this is absolutely crucial. So what you need to do is not only go over the warranties, but you also need to make them feel that, Hey, it's not the end of the world. You can always cancel. A lot of salespeople feel really terrible when they tell people that because they're like, Oh, okay. So if I tell somebody they can cancel, they probably will. I'm like, no, because the thing is, you're going to get them so excited that what you're doing is this. It's all about psychology. You're getting their guard down to the point where they can trust you. Now they really trust you. And so you've gotten them excited about even having solar. And it's a step by step process that you've taken them through. It's not about canceling. Yes, they can cancel, but saying it out loud is not going to hurt you. It's quite the opposite. So this is how you really want to convey the fact that you're not going to screw them over and you only have their best interest in mind. So I'm telling you, this is absolutely crucial. This is what I talk about in my training calls with my team. It is extremely important for you to do these things if you want to crush it in 2024 with remote solar sales. And I'm telling you, man, you do this right and you'll never again worry about where your next sale is going to come from. Because now you would have already cracked the code of remote solar sales. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future uploads. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.